the Fantasy Six Pack Hour with your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right. And welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as usual, co-host AJ Applegarth. What's up, man? What up? What's going on? Uh, watching a uh, a Chiefs Broncos game that just got a little bit interesting. Uh, just a few seconds ago, uh, Patty Mahomes out with a possible dislocated knee i guess i shouldn't say possible we just saw the video that is a that was a dislocated knee uh that they popped back into place that's really gross uh but yeah he's out for the game who knows how much longer uh however the the chief's defense has uh decided to rise to the occasion and just got a i don't know what it was i missed the play was it a fumble it was or an a sack, sack sack fumble, fumble. touchdown it looked touchdown, like touchdown yep so uh, good old Flacco to the rescue. And, uh, yeah, so this one got a little bit more interesting. You know, the the guys over that do the Balls Deep podcast, uh, Dave Eddy, Burt Fink, they, uh, they, you know, they were passing around lineups back and forth on, on Slack and just talking about all the different ones they were making. And and I think I think it was Burt was talking about how he was going to go heavy Broncos in one of them. And we were all like, uh that's not necessarily a great idea. <laughs> or maybe it was Keith, I forget. And uh Keith, you were part of that. And and we were all like the the Broncos would have to score a lot or like at least keep it close for that to really work and we just don't know if that's gonna happen. And I mean, right now it's not super close, but I mean you have to think without Mahomes it's gonna stay a lot closer than it probably should have. So All right, man. Uh so Tonight we're gonna to be talking some some headlines that went up. We're gonna get into some strength of schedule here for the next few weeks. You know, the teams you know, last week we talked about teams that are, you know, five and zero, oh, four and one, and then one and four and oh and five. And like at this point, this is almost more important for the teams that are, you know, struggling. Like maybe you can target some of these players who have the easiest schedule, you know, kind of try to avoid some of the players that have the harder schedule in the upcoming weeks. Uh, it's a little too far out, as you and I mentioned last week, to look at playoff schedules. It just uh, so much can happen before playoffs start, right? So, not quite ready to look at that yet. But you know, week seven through eleven is, is something that you can st- in, that you can look at and maybe set up your weeks to make sure that you're gonna have good lineups and position yourself to just get wins if you need them, right? Uh, and then, of course, we'll do our injuries and our week seven picks. So yeah, I I think next week we'll probably dive into the playoff schedules and strength of schedules and go from there. Uh, <laughs> It'll sure. be soft by that. Sure. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, well, before we get to that, let's do our beer of the week. Mm, beer. All right, what you drinking? Well, I am uh, back to Yamtown, USA, and drinking some. Greater pumpkin from Heavy Seas, ten percent ABV, delicious. A couple years ago, when they released this, uh, me and the wife went down to to their little tasting tap room thing that's about eight minutes from my office, uh, and, and tried it out. And they had their uh, keg reveal or whatever it was of of this. Um, so I'm sure they they tweak it a little bit every year, um, but it's it's one of my favorite pumpkin beers. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm, I do not get into the pumpkin, so you will not see me drinking those. But I am. Uh, I've had this on the show before. I couldn't find anything new at the uh, the store that I go to. Fortunately, I've got limited options. Uh, but I'm drinking a Sierra Nevada 2019 edition of Optimum Triple IPA. It's uh, it's definitely definitely tasty. It's like a I want to say it's like a nine point something percent. It's pretty up there. Um, 9.6 yeah but it's it's like a really malty um very very heavy hops like obviously triple ipa you would expect that 
Um, but, yeah. but it's not like too malty, too heavy to be bad, but you definitely have to be in the mood for it. Um, I, I, I gave it a four and a quarter on on tap, so I, I like it a lot. So Salad. All right, man, let's get to the news and notes heading into week seven. So start off with the buys here. Always notable. Tampa Bay, so missing, you know, Winston, if you're actually missing him after last week's shit show in London. No. Turd. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we were just talking Freaking the week played before. That, I like, played that guy in, like, I don't know, every league I feel like I own him in, and his point production ranged anywhere from nine points to almost 21 points. I I, I don't know. I mean, I guess how it's... The hell? Well, the, the interceptions, interceptions from being two points to one point, I think, helped. Or to zero? Uh, no. Is yeah, like definitely 10, not zero. Ten yards every point? Because <laughs> you threw for a ton of yards. <laughs> yeah, crazy. he had 400 yards. Yeah, but that's crazy. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, obviously gone too. For Carolina, we're missing Mr. MVP. Christian McCaffrey, that's a, that's the big one there. DJ Moore, obviously also big. Cleveland, Nick Chubb is probably the, I mean, I guess OBJ, but I mean OBJ has been kind of meh. So, but Chubb's the guy that's definitely being missed the most there. And Pittsburgh, Juju and Connor, although Connor's banked up. Yeah, uh, so, but yeah, a lot of a lot of solid fantasy options missing this week there. Along with all the injuries that we will get to, it's going to be an interesting lineup week for a lot of people. I have a feeling. Um, speaking of injuries, I want to get to this one too. So Cam Newton. Speaking of Carolina, um, Cam Newton shed the walking boot, uh, but the coaching staff isn't like eager to bring him back. And you know they're they're saying that they're just going to wait till he's one hundred percent and totally ready to come back. Um, but I wonder if this is more coach speak for. You know, we're we're kind of winning with Kyle Allen, and we might just stick with him. We don't need you back, so <laughs> like, if you could just put that walking boot right back on, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So. I don't. I mean, I I own Cam in my dynasty league, and that's it. I, I wasn't real high on him this year. Mm-mm. Just kind of needed to get a damn quarterback because they went so quick in that league. Um, but. I mean, I also have Allen, so he's been overall really good for me. Yeah, I, I mean, I snagged Allen in the Scott Fishbowl League and I uh, got him for six bucks before like all the cam news really came out. Like it had just started getting rumored, and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna put up a claim on it, see what happens, and <coughs> excuse me, it's working out real nice for me because my other quarterbacks are Fitz Magic and uh, Case Keenum, and Keenum's been all right, but. I'd much rather have Kyle Allen, who seems to be in a much better position there. Uh, so we've got a a trade. You know, we talked about some of the trades that were being rumored last week. Jalen Ramsey finally on the moves, not to your Eagles. He got traded to the L.A. Rams. It was for a 2020 first, a 2021 first, and you know, honestly, I wrote down a 2020 fourth but that could be a 2021 fourth. Do you remember? No, no, I'm pretty sure it's a 20. Uh, yeah, yeah actually, it I think but it anyway, might be a um, fourth it is a next year. fourth in the 2021 draft. Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, this was right after um, they traded Marcus Peters, who's been garbage. And I mean, this secondary is just a, disaster but i mean like i want to ask you do you think this is worth it i mean is this gonna be what changes their season i mean they've been kind of struggling i don't know i mean it it was kind of interesting to me because i heard about the peters trade first uh they, they traded uh marcus peters to baltimore for Either a linebacker, or a lineman, and a draft pick. Oh, like, yeah, the, the player doesn't even matter. <laughs> this was it, this well, was yeah, yeah. Rid of him. Well, probably. I mean, he's he's you know a, kind of a boomer bust guy and and whatever. But it really shocked me that they would trade away a, a 
DB when they just lost Akeem Tlaib. Right. Um, yeah. So I was like, why would they just do that? And then it's like, boom, oh, well, they got Ramsey. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that, that makes sense. Um, I mean, yeah, as an Eagles fan, I'm disappointed that they didn't get him, but that's a that's a pretty steep price to that pay. Is a steep price. I mean, your first it, the Rams have to be banking on the fact that they're going to be really good and either back to the Super Bowl or damn near close that those firsts are going to be borderline seconds. Um unless there's some other, you know, tie-in from another team that that is that pick that they traded. So, you know, like through Cincinnati and then to uh, the Jags, you know, something like that. And that would be really stupid if it was those two teams. But anyway, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a really high price to pay. I do think it's funny that we just talked about it and it was like, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen, you know, not for five first rounders. Well, all right, you got two. Yeah. Um, you know, and good. a third a third pick as well. So, you know, and th- there's some good value in the third, fourth, fifth rounds. I mean, look at some of the guys that have come out of those rounds and have had Hall of Fame careers. So, um I mean, I, I guess I like it for the Rams. I think they they get a good player, but I, I think I like it more for the Jags. Yeah, I I, I I tend to agree with you actually. So it, it's an interesting deal. We'll have to see how it works out. It, it's uh, not shocking that his back injury magically disappeared today. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, they're going to try to play him this week against Atlanta too. And, Why you know, not? Just lock him up on Julio. Might as well. All might the as Calvin well. Ridley. <laughs> He's going to eat up the rest of that secondary. Yeah. It's the new man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I us- I know we usually do injury news down below, but um Will Disley though. Ugh, such a brutal. Like I feel you got to feel for- you got to feel for this guy, right? I mean, the the yeah. the, the the bad knee injury last year and then this year tore his Achilles. He's having a great year again. I mean, just brutal. I mean, it- not much else to say, but the fact that it just sucks for him and obviously fancy owners because he was one of like five tight ends you could trust. Right. <laughs> and so yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty shitty. Um, yeah. The funny say, part about this uh, is the, the, the trade that I was talking to everybody on in Slack that was a, a mm. rental trade. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. I don't want to go into too much detail on it, but swapping back and forth of players they, between two leagues. And yeah. Team. Collusion. They, um, they basically the the one owner. Uh, well, yeah, the one owner who I'm like closer with. This is a home league, you know. He was talking about it and whatever. Because I asked him, I was like, "Yeah, so what was up with that trade?" You know, I was like, "You just picked him up off the waivers and then you dealt him immediately." I was like, "The other guy had like four tight ends sitting there. He had Howard, I think he had Cook, and he he had picked up Hunter Henry, and he was obviously in his IR, but." You know, Cook and, and Howard weren't really doing much and haven't really done much. So, you know, I get like it. like week two when it happened, right? So, like, you weren't – Yeah, didn't know I think it totally was – to give up on Howard was, yet. It was a weird one, Week dude. two, maybe week three. Um, I think it was week three because both teams were, like, two and one or whatever. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're not, like, undefeated and leading the league or anything. But, you know, whatever – the guy trades Disley for like Cole Beasley or something. It was something like that. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. DK Metcalf. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. I didn't really think much of it until he was talking to me. He's like, yeah, you know, we talked about it and you know, I think we're just going to do it for like a couple weeks and then trade them back to each other. I'm like, okay, that's weird. But I, I mean, I, I get the, the side of the collusion argument, um, and I don't necessarily like the idea of rental trading, um, but the teams were two and one. Okay, fine. Then they both lost that first week after the trade, so that was even funnier. Uh, I think both of them won the second week, and then they traded him back. So the guy who originally traded Disley 
gave back DK and Beasley. So that's where he came back into it to get Disley back. Because Disley still had two more good weeks. Uh, it just wasn't enough overall to help the guy win. So then he gets injured. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's karma, karma at its Karma big finest. time, but it's still that's still a crappy. And you guys need to, like, all season figure that crap out because that should not be that should not be allowed. That's, yeah. that's total BS. Um, I will say my piece on this Will Disley injury is why the hell isn't he on the IR list yet? I've got him in a dynasty league that I can place uh, infinite people on IR, and I want to yeah. make a move, and I can't because he's not on the IR yet. He that's just brutal. had surgery today. He's not coming back. <laughs> like what the hell. Well, and this is this is why I always push for players who are listed as out to be IR eligible. I, I have it that way in my league, and I'm pretty sure in almost every league I'm playing in, that is the setup. Yeah, um, see, we don't do it in the dynasty leagues that I'm in because there's just too many yeah, players I, already. But like in a regular league, yeah. fine. And in a regular league, yeah, my a, dynasty league, league actually, you're not keeping him anyway. But in the dynasty league, like he's just not on IR, so you can't move him. And it's, I don't understand it. I was like looking for it. There's a guy I want on the waivers right now. I'm like, I want this guy. I want this guy. And I want to start him this week. Yeah. And I can't do it. Uh. It sucks. So, all right, man, let's get to the strength of schedule talk here. So, like I said, we're focusing on week seven through 11. So, you know, this is good information for, for people who are in the kind of middle of the pack or, or, you know, bottom of the bottom of the standings right now just looking to get a push right you you need to go out and maybe target some trades just to get some some good wins go on the waiver wire and get lucky right um let's start with quarterbacks and do you want to do easiest or hardest first uh let's do hardest first all right so Set it up that way we're looking at quarterbacks right and the two teams that we uh, are focusing on for hard, two hardest schedules is Cleveland and Philly. And so Cleveland, right, we're looking at week 7 through 11. Uh, I'm just going to look at the slide. Yeah, so week 7, the they have a week. bye this week, so it doesn't really count. Week 8, they get the Patriots, not good. Week 9, they get the Broncos, definitely not good. Week 10, they get the Bills, definitely not good. And then the Steelers, uh, I mean, okay, but... According to, um, what is this, Fantasy FF Today, um, Pittsburgh is not easy, but not on the, not like impossible. Not like highlighted hard, red. Right? They're not yeah. highlighted. They're kind of middle of the pack, I guess you can say. And if I go to DVOA pass defense, uh, they're definitely they're ninth, <laughs> so ninth best. So there's that. Um, you know, and if I go to defense on Pro Football Focus, Pittsburgh is the sixth best rated defense. So definitely not. That's not a good matchup. I mean, uh it's that's a that's a brutal that's a pretty brutal stretch here of games for baker who's already struggling right so like at this point you know if you have another option for baker i mean and you need wins you just need to go find players who can help you elsewhere i think you can cut bait with baker what do you think uh he's actually sitting on the free agent you know waiver wire whatever you want to call it um in one of my leagues and I didn't even realize he was dropped, but he was dropped either pre, he must've been dropped last week or something because I think he was a cleared. Six pack league too. Yeah. He, he was cleared uh, to be picked up yesterday after waivers cleared. So uh, I don't know. Um, maybe he got dropped Sunday or something for like a last minute. But looking at this schedule, I mean, this is definitely a very uh, not ideal matchup, you know, especially throwing the buy in there this week. It's like, all right, well, you're already going to lose them for the for this right. week. And then, you know, at New England, at Denver, both horrendous places to go into and try to get a win. 
Um, you know, Bills eh, coming coming back home. Bills and yeah, Steelers. Bills, Bills are tough, dude. Bills man. is Bills, good, Bills man. I, Bills is good, yo. Uh, Bills the is, Bills, Bills are, are good. The third best defense according to DVO. Yeah, defense. They're, I mean, they've been very good. So ridiculous. I like that it's back home, but I mean they're they're Man. coming off of rest and then getting beat up two straight weeks to come right. home and be like, uh, all right, now what? And then the Steelers, I mean, yeah, they're, they're it's another tough divisional rival matchup, so those are never easy. I don't I don't care how bad a, a team is, unless you're Miami, um, and having you know a down year. Divisional matchups, teams just show up. So um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't question why he's on the waiver wire right now. After yeah. seeing all this, I, I did earlier this week, and then I was kind of looking at his team lineups, and I was like, nah, "Yeah, okay. Baker's Baker's." I'm looking at Yahoo right now. Uh, he's still 71 percent owned in Yahoo leagues. So yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of people that just have him. And you know, banking him to come back. I'm ready to cut bait if you need that roster spot for for damn sure. This is a brutal schedule, especially if you need wins. Uh, no reason yeah. to hang on to him. Uh, I, you know, of course that is assuming you have a v- option to use, right? I mean, if he's the only guy, you know, if you're looking at the waiver wire and you're looking at, oh well, I I guess I'll go pick up Case Keenum. No, no, no. Okay, you're keeping me. You're probably gonna try and uh, press no. your luck with with yeah. With you're gonna that hope point, that. But, uh, he figures it out and comes yeah. out of the bye week, you know, very. Yeah. Now an interesting one here is so we're looking at Philly, right? And Philly, you know, Carson Wentz, you know, a, a definitely a top 10 fantasy quarterback right now. Been good, even though he's, he's missed some weapons this year and uh, hopefully he's getting Deshaun back pretty quickly, but you know, his I, schedule he here coming might up, be back this week. I know I'm, I'm wearing excited. his Jersey for good luck. I know I'm, I'm hoping I man. need him. I need um, him to be back. Week. So week seven, they got the Cowboys, who's been exploitable lately. They've they've definitely let up some yards and some points the last couple of weeks. But yep. he gets the Bills. Yeah. The Bears, brutal. Week ten bye. And then week eleven gets the Patriots. I mean, that's <laughs> that's pretty damn similar to Baker Mayfield, actually. It, it, um, it is, yeah. Two of two of the well, three out of five teams are the yeah. same. One so, being bye, so but. Dallas is is like the outlier of that group, obviously, and they are twenty fifth. Easy, well, I guess easiest. They're ranked twenty fifth, uh, yeah, as as far as passing defense. So that's not a terrible matchup. Um, they just they kind of rocked it a little early on, and uh, I think they're. Well, they play. Look at who they play. I know the they play nobody. Weeks. So. Cupcake but teams. Score... I mean, the pay- same could really be said about the Patriots because they've still been just playing cupcakes. <laughs> they have. They have. Um, I'm waiting for it to normalize. We'll see. I got to hang out. You can't drop a defense that's been dropping 20, 25 points. Oh, no, 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 no. You're but, not. Uh, not at all. They... And that's not at all what Although, I'm advocating funny, if for they, here. If they, if they get, you know, I know the Chiefs is one of their teams coming up. They get the Chiefs without Mahomes. That could be a good one again coming up. That's so not a good one. <laughs> When do they play them? They play them in. That's uh, after uh, after oh, week, like week thirteen, 14. maybe. It's week fourteen. Yeah. That's playoff time. Okay. So yeah, that, he, I yeah. Think he, he. Who knows if he's bad? I don't know how bad like a dislocated knee would be, but uh, you know, and uh, yeah. So I don't yeah, know, I, mean, I mean this. Are this you potentially schedule... like streaming off of Wentz? I don't think you can drop Wentz, especially because no. you look at their schedule You're... afterwards. He's gonna get back into those division games, right? His they playoff schedule. End. I mean, I mean, I know we're not Seattle, talking playoffs. Brutal, but Miami back there in Week 13. They get the Giants. Yeah. They get the Redskins. They get Dallas again. That's and that's I mean, home. That's, I mean, I know. Yeah, like that's you said, a I know nice we looking at like playoff, playoff schedule, schedule, but. You can't drop Wentz, but are you looking no. at like pick if you have a option on the waiver wire that's good and you yeah, can start, I, especially the Chicago and Buffalo and weeks like do you do it? Chicago, I'm not as worried about. Bills, Why? Chicago's ridiculous. Chicago, their, the, uh, their defense is great. I, I Chicago's I'm the not sixth denying best that defense according to DVOA. Yeah, but and the fourth best overall defense. 
That's not a defense you mess around with, dude. I mean, I really just good... think that that being a home game after, you know, Maybe. them not being home for two straight weeks, the Bears game is going to be huge because of last year's playoff when they went into Chicago and, you know, came out alive with the win. The Bears are going to come out ready to play. I was going to say, could that just I, be more motivation for Chicago? Yeah, I, I think it is. But I just think, you know, I am i wouldn't necessarily, unless there's a really good option out there, I'm still going to start them in that game. I'm just not going to expect much out of it. Um, Patriots, yeah. it would, it would have to same be, deal. It would have to be a, a very good option, right? You would, yeah, you would have to have somebody dropping, you know, like it would be interesting to see if somebody had dropped like Drew Brees and come that week. I don't even yeah. know what the schedule is, but let's see if you could pick him up. Right. So Chicago is week nine. New Orleans plays. Oh, they're on by. So never mind. That's a bad option. Yeah. Uh, but you know what I mean? Matter, like, but th- there would have to be somebody decent out there. I mean, Hey, Sam Darnold plays Miami that week. Would you do that? Absolutely. hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, hey. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's things like that, though. It's like, it, who I knows? mean, we don't we don't even have Sam Darnold listed here on easiest, but let's flip flip back over to that. I mean, they're the Jets have a pretty nice schedule, too, but we'll keep uh, talking about the bills week, here. The Jags. Miami, New York, and Washington. Yeah, they do. And then if you go one bit farther, it's Oakland. <laughs> and it's Cincy, who's not good. Why are they a red? That's a weird yeah. stat there. Their they're pass defense is Baltimore way play. better than their rush defense. And probably just because teams get up well, on their them. Their rush Stop defense passing. is dead last. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, probably. Um, But, yeah, I mean, looking back at the Bills here, I mean, okay, they've got the Dolphins this week. Then we've already said they go to the Eagles. Yeah, so this is this, um, we're, we're switching over to easiest now. So we've got we've got yes. th- this was the first team we wanted to highlight for e- for easiest QB schedule. Yeah, yeah. Keep so you got Dolphins for... this week, then then Eagles next week, who are terrible against the pass. They're fantastic against the run, not so much against the pass. Yeah. Hence why they wanted Jalen Ramsey. Um, then you got the skins, then the Browns, who we already mentioned, and then the Dolphins again. Yeah, I mean, you you got Miami in there twice. Like that's all you need to say. Uh, you're playing Josh, Josh Allen, Allen regardless. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna be, he's been good. He's gonna still get both rushing and passing yards racked up for you. Yeah, I mean, he's owned a um, seventy percent of league, so he's not gonna be an option for you if you own no, like a, a he, like a Wentz, but. Yeah, he um, he's gonna be unless somebody if he has just a blow up game or something and somebody just drops him or just doesn't feel like they need him anymore because which I don't know why you wouldn't he's already had his buy so uh, yeah. I don't know I don't, I just don't see him being available but if you own him you you should be starting him yeah and then and, and he might of- also another thing to keep in mind here too is DFS. He's going to be an awesome DFS play because he's not going to cost you eight grand. Um, yeah, he won't be. He won't be full price. He won't be the highest price yeah. quarterback. But I guarantee his price will start climbing because of these. It matchups. probably will come come towards that week eleven Dolphins matchup. If he gets through the rest of these four games we have listed here and starts performing, he he could be higher, mm-hmm. you know, price wise. Um, but I haven't looked at at what this weekend's setting is yet for him but uh if it's even up but uh yeah and we talked like about Allen. new orleans so we talked about new orleans too but you know their schedule is pretty nice after i say after this week so they get chicago this week that's pretty brutal yeah but then they get arizona that's easy by week but then atlanta and tampa bay i mean those are two cupcake <sighs> pass defenses and then i mean if you want to go a little bit farther i mean carolina's not awesome but then they get atlanta right back they get them uh, again now yeah. their playoff schedule is pretty rough so uh don't want to look too far ahead but if you do want to rely on breeze if he comes back when they think he can playoffs you might want to have a different option because he's got a ridiculously hard schedule um so all right um yeah we got a couple little things here on the slide jimmy jimmy g under easy plays the cardinals twice in the next five weeks 
awesome. Yeah, but um, I mean, so here's my question about him, though. I mean, that offense isn't predicated to pass, right? I mean, they've been running the ball like crazy. So I yeah. don't even know if I really want to trust him at all. Like, maybe he's a DFS play, but in season long, I don't know if I care. I, yeah, I mean, I like him for those Arizona games, you know, and you should be able to potentially well, like this week, stream him. Yeah, this is a good week. Um, I, I just don't know if it's enough. Like, I think they, you know, the defense is ridiculously good. Um, yeah. And so they're going to get up big against a team, like especially the Washington. Maybe they don't get up big against Arizona because Arizona can put up points. But I just don't know if the offense wants to pass. No, I think they're they're way more into run first mm-hmm. right now. Um, I, and not trying to jinx them by any means, but those backs are – you know, suspect to injury. So, um, if something yeah, happens man, there, they always got people. I mean, well, they have like seventeen different running then, backs you know. that come up, so it's fine. But, um, you know, if something happens, they could try to lean on the pass a little bit more. Yeah, but, absolutely. All right, let's move on to the running backs here. So, with running backs, the the two teams that we're looking at for toughest schedule here. Arizona is the first one. So David Johnson, if healthy, Chase Edmonds. Uh, week seven, we get the Giants. Week eight, we get the Saints. Week nine, the 49ers. Week 10, the Bucks. And week 11, the 49ers again. So 49ers in there twice is pretty much what does it for him. Um, yeah. That's what we were just talking about. But the Bucks haven't been the Bucks and the Giants bad against the run at all. So it's kind of a 50-50 with with it, that, um, well, I I mean I think the Bucks is is a little bit tough. The Giants is a, a nice week this week. If Johnson plays, shows that he's healthy, and has a really good game against the Giants, trade him immediately. Just just do it. Just be done with it. Pick up, uh, you know, see if you can flip him for a, a Dalvin Cook. Uh, oh my gosh, you're not getting Dalvin Cook with you. <laughs> well, package it then. Come on. Uh, so you know, I, I wanted to talk about how to offer good trades, and maybe I should have done it for you. Um, <laughs> we'll get into that later. Let's uh-huh. finish the strength schedule talk. All right. Yeah. So it's a it's a pretty rough schedule. I mean, New Orleans is good too, and and Tampa just gets abused in the passing game. So they they're I don't think they're good against they're the not run, but good, they just but get they're not bad either. In the, in I mean, they they game. held they held McCaffrey in check in the first game. Um, yeah. So not so much in the second game, but that's because right. Winston sucks. So Seattle's so the other the other team that we've highlighted here, and they get they get the Ravens, uh, Falcons, Bucks, 49ers, and then a week eleven bye. So Chris Carson owners. Look, I you know, you're probably not doing much with him. He's just been a workhorse. But you know, yeah. the, I mean the first couple of weeks, I think you're okay with him. Baltimore and Atlanta, I think you're fine. Tampa, like we just said, it's kind of one of those teams just don't run on them. Yeah. Uh, and then San Fran is obviously hard. So, but then coming right out of the bye, they get Philly, which isn't good. So, no, that's um, that's a horrible matchup. Yeah. For running. But I mean, that Seattle offense, as I've mentioned many, many times, is just it's crazy efficient. They just figure out how to expose teams. They're kind of like new England of the NFC, right? They just find teams weaknesses and exploit it. So, you know, maybe they figure something out with Carson in those games, but, and, and look, you're probably starting him in season long if you have him. Um, but it's just one of those, like, you know, if, if you're desperate, maybe, maybe you flip him for, for one of these guys that we're going to be talking about here in the, easiest side so you want to take those yeah so first up we got mr rookie himself josh jacobs uh they are coming out of the bye this week so he should be well rested and and fully healthy i know he's been a little banged up earlier in the season uh but he's also coming off of his biggest game in the season uh i talked about that a little bit in the um news and notes for Oakland in today's uh, edition of the fantasy six pack running back depth chart. Um, Check it out on the site. Selfless plug. Um, (laughs) 
yeah, so the Packers, I mean, they kept carry on and check pretty well uh, this past week. It's not a, a horrible matchup, though. Um, I mean, their defense has been good, but I feel like they've been much better against the pass than the rush. Uh, Texans, eh, not what they used to be. Lions, we just saw Jamal Williams have a huge day against them. You know, granted, a lot of that came uh, because Aaron Jones couldn't get anything going against the Lions, but, Mm -hmm. you know, all you need is the opportunity. Chargers just got completely beat up by James Conner, and the Bengals are dead last in rushing defense, like I already said. So I I love that schedule. Now, looking ahead, his playoff schedule does get a little tougher, but it's still not hard, though. It's not. It's not terrible. Like he's so. a guy that you know, if you can maybe flip a Carson for him, like I might do it, man. It's he's he's got a pretty nice setup here for him to succeed for the rest of the season. Mine is like one game, at Tennessee possibly, but yeah. other than that, it's it's pretty nice. So yeah, so the next set we got here again, Buffalo, uh, two Dolphins, uh, Eagles, Redskins, Browns. Um, the Eagles is going to be that tough matchup for them out of that out of that bunch, but yeah. everybody else, not worried about them at all. No, definitely good. It, the The only issue with Buffalo is like who to trust, right? So Singletary's coming back. Yeah. Uh, you know he he's looking to be healthy, and you know Gore's been okay, but not great. So as much as I, an easy schedule is good here, like what does it really help you? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I can't remember where I read it. If it was Fantasy Life app that popped something up about it, or somewhere on Twitter, but it was talking about like the the reps at practice on uh, I guess it was yesterday for this week, and it was Frank Gore was starting, and then I think Yeldon was next, and then Singletary. So I don't know if Singletary is still kind of banged up or not, but. You know, if you own them, look at look at the news and notes next to his name. I don't own him anywhere, so I, I'm not up to speed on anything that he still has lingering. But I love Frank Gore this week against the Dolphins, his former team. So I think that's going to be solid. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it probably only for me. I'm just not truly sure here because of what, you know, because Singletary is potentially going to be back and stealing carries and things like that. And I, I don't know. I just, Josh Allen runs a lot too. So you just don't love it. So, yeah. I mean, moving on the receivers, uh, I just lost my notes. Where on earth did they just go? There they are. All right. So receivers, hardest schedule. We got Philly. No surprise with Wentz having the tough schedule. This kind of makes sense. Uh, so as we mentioned, Cowboys, Bills, Bears, by and then Patriots. So a lot of the same thing, right? I mean, I think the Cowboys is exploitable, but the Bills and the yep. Bears are rough, and then the Patriots is going to be really bad. Um, I mean, I yeah, I think they'll get better if Deshaun can stay healthy. I just you know it it'll be hard to they. I guarantee I will get a ton of questions on Twitter and myself because I own Alshon. In a couple of different places, I'll have to be second guessing myself a couple of different weeks. Like he'll be in that flex kind of option range, like that wide receiver three flex range every all of those weeks. So he might be a tough play for those guys. So if you could flip them, maybe they have a big game this week. If you can flip one of them for somebody, by all means, do it. Um, the Browns or again. The- you got to look at you know if you can get by without them in these next few That's weeks true. and, and you have to get by without them on week 10 when they are on the buy. Um, again, that playoff schedule lines up real nice. So it does, it does. It definitely you does. just got to get through this, this patch though. And it's, it's hard. I mean, I'm not dropping either one of these guys, no, but we're not dropping them. Um, you know, I, I'm not afraid to necessarily bench them either. But basically, if I have better matchups, I'm only trading them if I'm one of those teams that's like two and three right now, and I just need to run yeah. off some wins, right? I just need 
something. Yeah. Um, so another team that's got a, a pretty rough schedule, uh, it's it's the Browns. I guess that's also pretty obvious here, right? Yeah. So obviously the quarterback that had the rough schedule, the receivers got the rough schedule. That's pretty obvious. So, you know, Odell's been kind of struggling anyway, and then Jarvis Landry's been okay. But, I mean, is now the time, while Odell, maybe people have still some hope, is now the time to just dump Odell? Like, I actually got a trade question today. Somebody was like, should I f- try to flip Odell for, like, a Josh Jacobs or, like, a, a Nick Chubb? And I was like, oh, my God, if you can get Nick Chubb, yes. But, um, yeah, if you can make you that know, happen. The that other was- guys he put out there was, like, Marlon Mack or Kirion or – oh, there was a third one. Um, and I was like, man, I don't know if I, – I, I, I had a tough time trying to figure out if I would actually trade Odell, who we know is, like – out of this world talent, right? For Marlon Mack, I mean Marlon Mack's been all right, but I don't think I'm doing that trade. I, I think I'd run run with Odell on that one. Even if I, I would, I, I would have to. What's that? Yeah. So let's put it in a different scenario, though. What if you were a Two and three team, or a three and three. Well, I guess not. It can't be two and three. Yeah, right three now. and so you're three. Three and three, three and or a two and four team, right? And you have Odell. You get a bye week this week, so you're obviously hurting this week. But then you look yeah. at the schedule ahead for the next four weeks after that, and you're going, "Holy crap! I need to run off some wins. If I can get somebody like Marlon Mack, I mean, that might that might be enough to boost your team, right? If you have enough receivers behind him." Like you don't have to have, you know, Thielen and and those guys behind. Yeah. Him. You know, you've got enough wide receiver twos and threes sitting behind them that are going to fill in and be good enough for you. And I think I might pull the trigger. I think Especially I'm doing it if I'm struggling, too. Like it's. I, yeah. Rough. I mean, I think I think I can I can get on board with it if I can set up like a rental trade scenario. Um, oh, so some conclusion. Okay. And, so you're in. And that. just try to get them back. You know, <laughs> come week twelve. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to find possibly this. for like a Tyreek Hill because he's on the buy now. Oh, those were okay, uh, so those were the only four. Those were the only four. <laughs> yeah, so this guy yeah. has. I mean, this guy's got. It must be a ten team league. So he has Godwin, Cooper. Actually, maybe not because these guys were like late picks. So Godwin, Cooper, Crowder, and McLaurin behind him. Um, in a in a full I, PPR. I probably and he's, and he's like I could trade OBJ that. and possibly get one of one of these four. And I was like. I was like, man, if you can get Jacob and Chubb, for, absolutely. Carry on and Mag, yeah, I'm not I'm sold on. And I have carry on. I, I love, but he's just not. It's not, he's not the living volume. up to it this he's year. Not the volume. It's no. unfortunate. Uh, the other so, note here we had here was Terry McLaurin. He uh, proved to be. Uh, Keith put this in. He'll have to prove he, matchup proof. So obviously, San Fran, Minnesota, Buffalo. And the Jets. I mean, the Jets isn't anything crazy good, but the other the other three are yeah. pretty nasty. So we will find out real quickly if Terry McLaurin is is the real deal. Um, yeah, I kind of think he is. So, all right, give us the easiest yeah. schedule here. Flipping the script here on easiest, we've got uh, Buffalo to start again. Buffalo has owned this entire slideshow so far um, on both ends. Uh, John Brown, Cole Beasley, you know, both of these guys have been definitely They've been usable. good this year. Flex, you know, I, I, like, guys. yeah, they're, they're serviceable playing guys. So Dolphins twice again, Eagles suck against the pass. So that's fine. And Beasley's used to carving them up anyways. Uh, same thing with the Redskins um, and then the Browns. So love both of these guys for, for the rest of this uh, little run here. Uh, and then we've got Dallas listed as well with Cooper and Michael Gallup. Um, Gallup got a huge boost in fantasy pros rankings this week. Uh, I think part of that is because of Cooper's injury, but um well, we still have yet to hear whether or not Cooper will play against the Eagles. Um, I'd be fine if he does not. Um, still have a bit of a bad taste in my mouth from 
the last game where he had two or three touchdowns against us and the one was kind of a BS end of game, whatever. I'm digressing. Uh, week eight by Giants suck. Uh, Vikings, eh, you know, it depends on what, uh, what happens with uh, Rhodes, if he gets dealt or not. Um, so that could turn into a much better matchup, but I don't love that matchup necessarily. Um, and then the lions just got torched by, uh, uh, you know, whatever Jesus Lazardo uh, or somebody. No, I know it's not him, but, uh, Lazard from green Bay because every one of their other receivers went down. So, um, it's favorable. Yeah. Uh, and then the bottom bottom note we have here, Edelman, Gordon, Dorsett, uh, all have plus matchups ahead of them with the Jets this week, Cleveland next week, at Baltimore, then on the bye, and then at Philly. So look for New England to, I guess, continue to remain undefeated. No, hopefully not. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much wraps it up for wide receivers. Yeah, so I mean, again, the the key takeaway there is, you know, like, you know, if you're in good shape and you can hang on to some of these good players through these rough patches, then I think I think you try to do it. Um, but you know, if, if you're a team who's just kind of in desperate need for wins, maybe you flip some of these players who are going through a rough schedule here for the next, you know, four or five weeks, and you know try to get some of these players who, you know, you're probably giving up the better player overall, but man, you need wins. So like, that's what it comes down to. Not, I mean, don't, don't sell yourself super short, you know, don't go, don't go selling uh, Odell Beckham for Cole Beasley guys. Like, no, you're not doing that. Um, but you know, if you can sell Alshon for like a Gallup, I, you know, that's a trade I might legit do. That's yeah. That's not, not terrible. I mean, Alshon's got that name value so like that could do it you know that's the type of thing that like that's the one that i you know just kind of look at the guys we kind of cover that's why i brought that up so yeah you know that's that's what we're trying to say here so um just information to take in use it use it at your own leisure um and uh yeah go from there so injuries all right man so uh we've got Start with the out or unknown players. Uh, start with Arizona. David Johnson, he's dealing with an ankle injury uh, on top of the back injury. Although I heard, read, heard. He, um, yeah. I heard he, he practiced ready today. To practice today. So he's like actually ahead of schedule of where he was last week with just the ankle or with just yeah. the back. But the ankle is like a concern. So. We'll have to see how he progresses through the week, but it sounds like he's going to play. So, I mean, you you roll with him if he plays, but I, I'm kind of worried yeah. that he's going to get limited touches. So we'll see what happens. And Chase Edmonds has proven that he's, you know, very very useful when he when he gets reps. Uh, Christian Kirk also on this team trying to recover from his ankle injury, but he's gotten in two limited practice this week, but. I don't know if two limited or even three limited practices is going to be yeah. enough to get him to play. So that's something you got to keep an eye on. He's got a tasty matchup though, but I don't know. I don't know if it's enough. Yeah. Um, I think he was still listed doubtful the last I saw. So yeah. Uh, on the bill side, John Brown got a limited practice in today with a groin injury. So trending toward playing, but we'll see. Uh, D.D. Westbrook shoulder injury that popped up today, Thursday. So that's that's a concern. You're not going to get a lot of information when the injuries pop up on the day of on the day we record. But just knowing that it came this late in the week is never a good thing. Um, Josh Gordon dealing with a knee injury. It, it says he's questionable from Monday Night Football, but he's the played more, the last couple of weeks um, just the more i'm looking at it and the more i'm reading other people either. talk about it like beat writers and and things like that like they're, they're just saying it's it's it seems more unlikely than likely that he plays so uh he's on the more doubtful side of questionable from what it seems like but again it's a monday night game so you're probably gonna have to just if i owned him and i didn't have a, like a backup player for him on monday which you probably don't 
then I, I, yeah, I, think, you're... I think you're just benching him on Sunday. You can't risk it. Um, and we will, we, we likely will not know by Monday. I mean, I, I think you would agree with that. Yeah. Um, or by Sunday, I mean. Uh, Alvin Kamara, this is a big one. So, um, you know, he was pretty limited last week. And you could tell in the game they kind of held him back. And Latavius Murray got a lot more run in that game. Uh, he, he didn't practice again on Thursday. He's got a knee and ankle. I, I've I've heard from co- a couple of different sources that it actually is a high ankle sprain, which means which means he's out for a month. I mean, we're talking Saquon Barkley, right? I mean, that's exactly what it, he's yeah, out I mean, at least for a month. He was out three weeks basically so, so who knows but like it's not official yet but that's some of the rumors that i've read on you know by different people closer to the team right and yeah. when they go out and sign somebody like zach zenner uh my guess is that he's not going to play this week so you're gonna have to look elsewhere um and that obviously a huge blow for, for fantasy owners here Sterling Shepard for the Giants was limited Thursday. I initially had him as a likely out with the concussion. Uh, he's limited today, so he's trending in the right direction. Um, he's got a pretty good matchup, too, so if he can get on the field, this is uh, it's pretty big for, for fantasy owners. And uh, Danny Dimes, uh, it's going to be a good one for him. Oh. And then Adrian Peterson is dealing with a quad injury, but he did practice today. Um and I'll bounce right over to the to the likely out here, like to kind of pair this together. And Chris Thompson, he's dealing with turf toe, and he's, I mean, he hasn't been ruled out already, but I mean, I think at this point we pretty much know he's going to be out. Like turf toe does not go away in f- you know five days, right? Seven days, yeah. it just doesn't happen. So um, no. Plus, these guys are going up against San Fran this week, so yeah, you don't want to use I, them anyway. <laughs> you're you're dropping them down the rankings, anyways. Um, if you even use them, um, you have to be desperate from one of these bye week guys. Um, uh, absolutely. But the other, the other news, since we're talking to Redskins uh, and running backs, uh, Callahan said that Darius Geis could actually start, uh, practicing in the next week or so. So oh, yeah, that, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. That, he's at least a couple weeks well. away before he can even return. But yeah, that's, that's yeah. promising. I mean, it's very promising. I, I I just want to see I mean, this guy on the field, man. Like he's so yeah. talented, you know he is. Like you've seen videos of how he just makes people look ridiculous when he's actually out there, but he's just can't be healthy. He can't stay healthy, and it's it's a shame. So, um, sticking with the likely out here, we got Chris Herndon out with a hamstring injury still. Uh, Malcolm Brown is likely out this week with an ankle injury. He's trending on the wrong side. Yeah. Um, Amari Cooper, as you mentioned, uh, he did not practice today with a quad injury. He's looking like on the wrong side of questionable. And then Hollywood Brown is also on the wrong side of questionable with an ankle injury. Then the one I skipped, I'm just going to say the Green Bay Packers. Can, can, <laughs> the entire offense minus the running backs and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. We obviously yeah. know Adams, turf toe. Geronimo Allison, he's out with a concussion. And MVS is out with an angle. Not out. But then Jimmy Graham is also yeah. like questionable. I didn't put him down here, but I mean this is just brutal. Like I don't know what to do with I, any of these Green Bay players this week. This is crazy. I don't know what's what's worse from our standpoint doing this Wednesday nights or Thursday nights, because I feel like the injuries are even worse on Thursdays. I know we used to talk about it a lot last year when we were doing Wednesday nights for the show. I, I like and doing it now because we get more. We get more info on it. Like, oh, info. well, like, they Wednesday's missed usually Wednesday. Good. It was a maintenance day or whatever. Right. Like, yeah. okay. You never knew. It was always like, oh, he's just yeah. resting today. And so today was like the, oh, he practiced. Yeah. So um, I do like it better, but it, it's just kind of funny to see. How, like just how the progression works now. So, uh, but yeah, and Matt Moore missed an open Tyree kill, dude. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Terrible. Tyree kill was just like, throw me the damn. Well, he wasn't wide open. He just had, uh, it was, one, it was enough. He finally had a catch that I saw. I'm like, a, I don't know. 
three plays behind you probably. So, all right. What do we yeah. got for the possible returns here? All right. Well, we're looking at uh, Mitch Trubisky is looking good. Um, he is trending towards playing this weekend. Uh, Todd Gurley um, is is practicing limitedly, but uh, it, it's, he's back to practicing, so that's a good sign, especially with Malcolm Brown likely out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Gurley I listed as as probable to play. Um, on the the depth chart, Philip Dorsett is also trending towards playing um, after dealing with a hamstring injury. Um, we already mentioned Josh Gordon, so you know, look at uh, look at uh, Jacoby Myers could could get an increase in playing time if either of these two guys yeah don't get the playing time or. You know, Julian Edelman will just have 26 targets and, uh, you know, <laughs> James 24, White, right? 24 catches. James yeah, White. This could be a good James White week. Exactly. Uh, no, I, I, like the, I like the Jacoby Myers. Uh, and, and then uh, Evan too. Ingram and Saquon will return. Yeah. So that is <laughs> got fish big. Yeah. Scott Fisher uh, team, rise, please. <laughs> I, mine needs to rise from the depth of you're finally right. winning a game your quarterback your, i mean your quarterbacks ruined you early so that's that's just tough well yeah nothing you can do in there, super man. flex league when you don't have quarterbacks it's gonna be hard to win yeah pretty much all right man uh let's finish things out here week seven picks to highest and lowest scoring game start with highest what you got i'm going with the homer pick here man i'm going philly at dallas um i think that if Amari plays, this would definitely be, you know, could be the top game. It's Sunday night football, of course, because Jerry Jones can't play a freaking one o'clock game if his life depended on it. But that's fine because I want this to be late so I can actually watch it. Um, I just think that there's so much talent that's going to be on the field between these two teams. It's obviously these two teams you know, are fighting for the division lead and, you know, maybe wild card spot in the playoffs. So I love it. Yeah. Bring so it mine's, on. Mine's going to be Rams and Falcons. Uh, I know, you know, I know the Rams offense hasn't exactly been lights out lately. Uh, Jared Goff, <clears throat> 78 yards last week. Um, that was sucks. Yeah, that was terrible. Uh, just gonna say, by the way, I was three for three on my bus picks last week. Like, nailed it. Um, but Rams Falcons. I mean, neither one of these defenses. I don't care if Jalen Ramsey is out there or not. Like, I don't think the Rams defense is gonna be like, you know, crazy good. But the Falcons, you know, they've been just passing all over the place. Uh, they get down early, which they probably will again, because uh, the defense blows, and then they just score 30 points in the second half every game and it's just going to be a high scoring game so yeah all right my lowest scoring i'm going with the uh la chargers at tennessee tennessee coming off of uh a shutout loss where they were the ones getting shut out um Tannehill, i guess is gonna start for them now i it, don't really know if he's a step up from Mariota. I think they both suck. Um, we Chargers, agree, but I do think it's a step up, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, he's more, I guess you could say he's done more with less Tannehill has. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, fair. Chargers obviously have, you know, quality talent. Still got Phil Rivers slinging it around out there. But I, I just I don't know. I, I think both the defenses in this game could could step up big too. So just don't like it. Yep, that was one of the ones on my radar. I went with Saints at Bears, and I know you know a lot of people look at the Saints and think oh high scoring offense, but I mean they still got Teddy Bridgewater who hasn't been bad. wasn't great last week, but other than that's been pretty good. But I mean both these defenses are just you know they're just top notch at this point. So. I'm not. I'm not looking for a very high scoring game on either side. Yep. Yep. All right. So sleepers and busts. Um, 
start off with the quarterback positions here. Um, my quarterback sleeper is Jacoby Brissett. Now, again, I've been preaching about divisional matchups all over the place tonight, I feel like. So this is obviously a tough matchup uh, with Houston. But, I mean, they're coming out of the bye week. He's well-rested. Um, that's going to help Indy in general. And, you know, it's just going to – hopefully they can build off of this Kansas City win from two weeks ago as well and just kind of keep up their punch-you-in-the-mouth play. So yeah. I like Brissett. Yeah, I like that one. I went with Daniel Jones uh, getting Arizona uh, again. You know, we mentioned it earlier. It's a it's a good matchup across the board wherever you look at it. Right, at the thirtieth ranked defense according to DVOA uh, for pass overall defense is bottom of the barrel on Pro Football Focus as well. So it's just it's a good matchup for Daniel Jones and. He's getting back all his weapons, baby. So first time he's going to be fully loaded this year. Yeah, yeah, that'll definitely be uh, be interesting to see how he gets out there with everybody at his disposal. Um, running back, I'm going Jamal Williams. He had a monster game, like I said, with his opportunity, uh, thanks to Jones's issues, uh, fumble issue, and and at least one drop pass that was right in his hands, uh, both of those early. So um, I, I think especially with all of the injuries to their receivers, um, they could be leaning on him heavily in the passing game too. <clears throat> yeah, I like that one. So I went with another uh, backup running back myself, Chase Edmonds. Like I alluded to, I mean, like, even if David Johnson plays, I think they're going to limit his workload just because he is dealing with some injuries. And Chase Edmonds has proven that he can make it work with limited touches. Uh, so I think he is a very viable flex option at this point, especially for those of you dealing with injuries to, like, Kamara and, and those types of players. So uh, slot him in if you need to, and I think you'll be okay with it. Yeah, I mean, he, he still had a very worthwhile game last week, even with DJ playing. So mm -hmm. uh, I definitely like that pick as well. Uh, receivers, already mentioned him, Jacoby Myers. I think I spelled Jacoby wrong did. here. Which that's okay. Yeah, nobody, but, nobody sees our notes, so you didn't have to call yourself out, but that's all right. I will because <laughs> I am Captain Grammar, so yes, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm mad at myself, but uh, whatever. Uh, Josh Gordon still nursing his injury, so it's it's kind of a you know cop out pick, I guess. But oh, Myers was good. Myers, last week Myers Gordon was pretty good last out. week, and and uh, like you know had five, four catches, four or like, five catches. Yeah, he caught but, all four or five of his targets for like yeah. four yards or something like that. So solid game. Yeah, I, I think he he could get more involved. Gordon has just been dog caca this year, and I'm. Um, Careful! Mad, I own don't him. let don't let Kevin and, and and Jonathan hear that. You hear me, guys? It sucks <laughs> this year, right? If you want them, uh, you can have them. If the I have Fantasy Edge podcast on uh, six it records league. Monday night, man, those guys will be mad at I you. Do. Well, they can they can call me out then. But yeah, I like <laughs> I like Myers this week. All right, yeah. So mine is another injury replacement, and it's Alan Lazard. And you're probably going who? Uh, but I just mentioned him. Yeah, but he uh, stepped up last week for Green Bay, and I believe he caught the game-winning touchdown. Or well, not the game-winning touchdown, the game-winning field goal, but caught the touchdown yeah. to get him within field goal range, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, but again, the entire wide receiver core is, is hurt. So I mean, might as well. So I think there'll be a heavy run game by Green Bay, by all means, but somebody's catching passes for Green Bay, and it's going to be him. That's all there is to it. So Yeah. All right, what you got for Bus? All right, so it was kind of tough for me to pick Ooh, a quarterback Hill this week. Tyreek Hill scored a touchdown. But who did? Tyreek. 
Nice. I needed that. Got a big. It looks like a pretty big play too. So solid. Um, Russell Wilson is who I'm going with. Um, I still think he's going to have a decent game, and if you own him, you're starting him unless you just randomly have a really good matchup with somebody else. Uh, yeah, but I, you know, Baltimore. <laughs> Yeah, Baltimore D's going to have to keep the pressure on him. Um, and they they kept uh, they kept mixing in check last week with the run game. So maybe they'll try to do the same with Carson. And in turn, that'll, that'll affect Wilson's ability to run. But if they can get through their line, if, if Baltimore's D can get through the Seattle line, then I think it could be a tough day for Wilson. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Baltimore's defense hasn't been great lately, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I know I just said Lazard would be a sleeper receiver, but I think the receiver can still do well and the quarterback not live up to expectations, right? So Rodgers is still being ranked in the top 10 or 12 or whatever it is. Um, I don't see it, man. Like, I <laughs> Al Lazard and Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones is not going to be enough for him to have a good day. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it will be. So, I mean, he hasn't had a he good day. Really like, hasn't had a good day anyway. All year. So yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, what's your bus running back? I'm going with Zeke, man. I know I picked this to be the the highest, you know, scoring game, and I you think Zeke really want Philly to win this game. Did, <laughs> it's already been said that it's going to, you know, they're going to win. You know, the coach said it, so. It's clearly going to happen because guarantees like that always come through. Duh. Um, mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm going against Zeke here. I think he's still going to get. He's definitely going to still get his touches. But like I said, man, Philly's rush defense is no joke. Uh, they're second in the league on rush yards per game. So, and I think it was under seven. It might have been under seventy yards or right around seventy. So. That's that's pretty damn solid for me. Um, you know, Zeke's still one of the best out there, uh, but I, I think if Cooper's out this week, they're going to turn their focus on to stopping him, and they're going to make him eat his own little soup. Right. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get the, mean, But anyway. Uh, so my running back's going to be Kyrion Johnson. I do think. I I could have gone with Mixon, but I just I'm tired of talking about Joe Mixon and how terrible he's been. But carry on Johnson, I mean, we kind of mentioned it earlier too, where he's he's been okay, but like just not they're just not using him like you think they would. Um, and and last week, like if he hadn't scored that touchdown, it would have been a really bad week for him. So this yeah. week going up up against the Minnesota front, which is dominant at this point it's just um you know top four against rush defense according to the dvoa like nah i'm not i'm not feeling a good game from carry on this week yeah i can uh i can see that um receiver i am going with dj shark do 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 this is going to be a run heavy game against the porous and pathetic Cincinnati rush defense. I love Fournette this week. Um, I am buying all the shares of him in DFS because I don't own any shares of him in anything else. Um, I, I just, I, I think Chuck could still have a good game, but I, I just, I think they're going to run heavy on, on this week and uh, you know, they're not going to be as involved. Yeah, I could see that happening. So mine's gonna be Keenan Allen, and uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's a it's a tough matchup against the Titans defense for one, but he's been disappointing. You know, the teams have really just double teamed him a lot and taken him out of the game, and you know, Rivers just really hasn't been throwing him the ball as much, and and we've seen it. You know, it's been single digit points the last three weeks, and I think we're gonna get a fourth. Yeah, I I could definitely see that. So, all right, man. What you got for your defensive streaming team? For I'm 
I'm going with the shock and all pick of the J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> These guys scored two touchdowns <clears throat> against New England in their first meeting. Yeah, but weren't those uh, against I, when they put in the backup? The I Patriots don't were up I don't know, so possibly. big. They put up uh Yeah. They put in oh, who the hell is his name? Stid Stidham yeah, or whatever. Stidham, yeah. And I'm pretty sure they ran a they they got a pick and returned it. They, they might have had another touchdown other than that, but I do. Yeah, they that. definitely and they, had. And then they two. decided to put back in Brady. They were like, "All right, enough of this." <laughs> put back in Brady. Yeah, it's possible. I don't. I don't remember. I just remember seeing the stats from when I was looking at it today and saw two touchdowns. I knew that they had put up good points against them since I own both of these defenses in the fantasy six pack league, which everybody, mind you, laughed at uh, on draft day and. Uh, yeah, my team is kind of in the tanker, but but there was a reason behind my madness. No, so we were right to laugh at you. No, for drafting two defenses. You 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 were probably right to laugh at me then, but I will be completely uh, redeemed and laughing when I win the championship with two defenses on my roster the entire year. Write it down. Anyway, I don't see them scoring two touchdowns this week, but I do think that this team and defense will rally around Sam Darnold. Um, it's a huge divisional matchup. Keyword of the day. Uh, I mean, if this was the Pee Wee Herman show, I'd be floating around in cherry all day. Going, that would be the word of the day. Okay. Or phrase of the day, I guess. I don't know. People who listen to our show probably don't even know who Pee Wee Herman is. Um, <laughs> But okay. that's why I make with these references. For the like few that do, this pumpkin's for you. Look it up on Google, kids. Uh, mine's going to be the Lions. Uh, look, I mean, honestly, this week was bad for picking a streaming defense. You know, we we kind of hamstring ourselves. We might need to up this. To, we have it at 40% owner or less, but I mean, we're, we're, we're having a tough time picking some streaming defenses. I mean... I, weeks, I was man, okay last just, week. I picked uh, – who did I pick last week? I picked uh, – I picked I Denver, picked last, Denver week. last week. They were and monster. they were awesome. They shut out Tennessee. So <laughs> yeah. I just agreed with that pick by proxy because yeah, I, I mean, hated the rest of the picks. Else. Yeah, so, I mean, this week I'm picking the Lions. They get Minnesota, who's been a lot better on offense lately. But, I mean, the Lions actually haven't been bad this week on de- – or this year on defense. I mean – Five, seven, they have like a couple of double digit weeks. You know, nothing crazy. They don't have any of those like crazy big weeks like a lot of these teams have. But I mean, the Lions are the Lions are good. They got a, a decent secondary, I'd say. Um they're not bottom of the barrel, but I mean they they can hold teams of their own. They're they're pretty much middle of the pack. So, you know, with Darius Slay, they'll they'll shut down at least one of those receivers on every play. And uh it's gonna have to be through. It's gonna have to go through um, Cook, which obviously it can because he's a monster. But uh, yeah, you know we'll, we'll. I don't know. Like I said, there was a lack of options. That's the one I picked. We'll see if it works. I'm hoping you have better. <laughs> uh, what? Better options. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Th- those of you listening, I'm hoping you have better options than Detroit. But if you don't. Eh, okay. Good All luck. Right. <laughs> so, I right, meant that's it. Uh looks like 27-6 is the score right now with a couple minutes to go in the third, so it looks like Kansas City is going to run away with this one. Uh I just saw Joe Flacco basically close his eyes and throw the ball, so that's not a good sign. <laughs> He did a he did a replay where he like <laughs> threw the ball and his like eyes blinked and the ball like bounced back at him and it's like you're flinching? Okay. Game yeah. over. Um, so, I meant that's all I've got. You got anything to add? No. Nah, go birds. Suck at Dallas. <laughs> I can at least get on board with that a little bit. All right. <laughs> good night, everyone. Or have a good weekend. See ya. Peace.